Hi, <laughs> welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm so glad to see you again. Well, of course, I can't really see you, but I'm going to imagine I can see you. And I'm really, really glad to be back. I hit a little break and, and now we're back. Um, so we're going to start a new story today. And I want to do a little, a little bit of a recap in the beginning about what we talked about so far. Let's see. We start with birds, with feathers and wings, and a beak, and cool feet. And then we moved on to reptiles, and reptiles had scales, and they shed their skin. And let's see, what else was cool about reptiles? <gasps> they were ectothermic. Yeah, they got their energy from the warmth and the sun. So we learned a lot so far, and then of course we moved on to amphibians, which we're going to go over again today. And we'll remember what those four things were that made amphibians special, and hopefully I can remember the song. If not, we'll make it up. So let's start with one of my very favorite books called The Salamander Room. And this is a story by Anne Mazur, and it's illustrated by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher. Wonderful story, beautiful illustrations. Oh, it starts with a little butterfly right there in the beginning. How wonderful. Brian found a salamander in the woods. It was a little orange salamander that crawled through the dried leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come live with me, Brian said. He took the salamander home. A little salamander, a little red salamander. Where will he sleep? His mother asked. I will make him a salamander bed to sleep in. I will cover him with leaves that are fresh and green and bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. I will bring crickets to sing him to sleep and bullfrogs to tell him good night stories. See the little habitat, the little home he made in his drawer? And when he wakes up, where will he play? I will carpet my room with shiny wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up the bark and sun himself on top. And I will bring boulders that he can creep over. There he is. See him? In the room, and the dump truck helped to bring the leaves. How fascinating. He will miss his friends in the forest. I will bring salamander friends to play with him. Look, little cricket, I wonder if that's his food. They will be hungry. How will you feed them? I will bring insects to live in my room and every day I will catch some and feed the salamanders and I will make little pools of water on top of the boulders so they can drink whenever they are thirsty. Wow, look at the salamanders. Looks like a red salamander and a spotted salamander. Two of my very favorites. The insects will multiply and soon there will be bugs and insects everywhere. I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and insects and the bullfrogs will eat them too. Look at that, there's a bullfrog. Where will the birds and bullfrogs live? I will bring trees for the birds to roost in and make ponds for the frogs. Oh boy, look at his room. Oh gee, that's a sicker room I'd want to live in. Birds need to fly. We know that. We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out in the sky, but they will come back to my room when it is time for dinner because they will know that the biggest, juiciest insects are there. trees how will they grow the rain will come through the open roof and the sun too and vines will creep up the walls of my room and ferns will grow under my bed there will be big white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing around the tree stumps that the salamanders climb on wow 
And you? Where will you sleep? I will sleep on a bed under the stars, with the moon shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot, and crickets will sing, and next to me on the boulder with its head resting on soft moss, the salamander will sleep. You see him sleeping right there? Oh, what a wonderful room. Oh, I can imagine that the room for me. And there they are in their salamander room. Whoa, isn't that a lovely story? It truly is one of my favorites. And I'm so glad we got to read the whole thing because it was not that long of a story. Now, I think it's time that we met our visitors for today. Now, I have to tell you a secret about these guys. They have a very frightening name, a very scary name. But wait till you see them and how beautiful they are and maybe a little bit about why they have the name they have. So let's see if I can find them. They're very tiny, so I have to be very careful. Oh, I see them. Now, before I grab them, I'll tell you their name. They are called Poison Dart Frogs. Poison Dart Frogs. It's kind of a scary name, right? Because when you hear poison, you normally think danger, dangerous. And that's exactly what these animals might be in the wild. In the wild, these little guys, these poison dart frogs, would eat bugs that might have some poison in them, that may have eaten some plants that had some poison in them. And so frogs, remember in amphibians, when they eat things, they can breathe through their skin. So anything they eat that has poison, it comes through their skin. Remember that? Let's see, to help you remember, I'll put my frog skin on. They have, see, Breathe through their skin, yeah. Cover up my Princess Leia shirt, oh no. So, these guys in the wild would be dangerous. They would have poison that would come through their skin, yeah. But since I have them in my house, they're kind of my pets, I only feed them crickets. Little tiny crickets and little tiny flies. And they don't have any poison. So they don't have any poison to breathe through their skin. So they're safe. So you'll get to see me hold them. Let's see. Let's see if I can grab them. I probably won't, I have two of them in here. I probably won't grab both of them because they're so tiny. Let's see. Ooh, very, very hoppy. And they're very good at hiding from me. You're so patient with your waiting. Whoa. Oh, okay, I got one. Let's see if I get the other one. Okay, I got both of them. Now, I'm only gonna be able to keep these guys out for a little bit because I don't want them to hop away because they're so very, very tiny. But I'm gonna open my hands very carefully. <gasps> Do you see? There's one there. And there's one there. Yeah, the little poison dart frogs. Do you see them? Look at how little. And these guys have very pretty blues on them. It looks a little yellow from the light, but it's some blues. And those bright colors are kind of like stop signs. They're kind of like a warning. They say, whoa, they say, stop, don't eat me. I may be dangerous. Woo. Oh, one on the floor. Okay. Now, I'm gonna show you one more time and then I'm gonna have to put them away because I don't want them to hop too far away. You see the little tiny poison, there you go. Little tiny poison dark frogs, yeah. They're so cool. Woo. I'm gonna put them away and we'll try to bring them back out in a little bit, okay? Let's see. Put them back in. Okay. So poison dart frogs. They were pretty cool. And I'm wondering if they're amphibians. We talked about breathing through skin and that's something that made amphibians special. And I don't know that we would have been able to see it without a tool like a magnifying glass, but they certainly do have eyes on top. Eyes on top. Yes. Amphibians have eyes on top to help them see any predators. Remember to help them swallow. <gasps> yeah, very, very cool. And let's see, hmm, what was something else cool about amphibians? I think we remember it was something about the way they change and grow. Let's see. I didn't show you this one last time, so hopefully we can see it today. Let's see. Look. Oh, they start out like this. 
a little tiny tadpole. And then they start to grow <gasps> legs. And then they grow <gasps> front legs. And then they start to change and go through metamorphosis. They go through metamorphosis until they're a full grown frog. Metamorphosis. So let's see. Frogs had, oh, do you know what else we didn't do? We didn't do, oh, let me grab it. Oh my goodness. They were already in there, but we forgot the one thing that made frogs special. The wet, slimy skin. So let's see, amphibians had wet, slimy skin. They breathe through their skin. They have eyes on top and they go through metamorphosis. Oh my goodness. Now let's see if we can end, we'll sing the song and then, and then we'll try to say goodbye to our poison dark frogs. Yeah. Let's see, how did it go? Amphibians have eyes on top, eyes on top, eyes on top. Amphibians have eyes on top and wet, slimy skin. Amphibians, they breathe through skin, breathe through skin, breathe through skin. Amphibians, they breathe through skin and go through metamorphosis. I remember that! Oh my goodness! I'm so excited! So let's say, let's say one more time. Let's see if we can bring our dart frogs back out and see if they cooperate. And we can say goodnight, dart frogs. Oh, yeah, they're right here. Whoa. Okay, I got one. I got one. Yeah, okay, I got him. I have them! Okay. Good night, dart frogs. Good night, dart frogs, and good night to all of you. Thank you. Whoa, I got a dart frog on my lap. Okay, okay. Good night, everyone. I'm so glad to see you again.